we shall continue with the next and the last talk uh, in the today afternoon. It will be by Karin Melnik uh, from the University of Maryland, and she will talk about conformal groups uh, of uh, compact Lorentzian manifolds. So please. Thank you. Um, greetings from Maryland. <clears throat> I wish that I could be there, but I'm uh, really grateful that it's still possible to participate from here. Um, and I would like to thank the organizers for the opportunity to talk and also the previous speakers for their nice talks. So I'll be talking about joint work with uh, Charles Frances from the University of Strasbourg. And um, basically the first half of the talk will be some uh, background and context for um, our theorem. And in the second half of the talk, I'll try to um, say some things about our proof, okay? So um, uh, the, the motivation for um, the uh, conjecture that we are working on is um, a theorem called the Ferran-Obata theorem, which is a theorem in conformal Riemannian geometry. So the motivating example is the sphere with its usual Riemannian metric of constant positive curvature. And um, here the isometry group of the sphere is uh, this compactly group On plus one. Whereas the conformal group Okay, so these are the transformations of the sphere, which pull back the metric to a multiple of the metric by a positive function. I think everybody here um, knows what that is. Um, it's bigger. So it includes, um, this is supposed, this uh, graphic here is supposed to give you some idea of um, a one parameter group that is a flow on the sphere, which is conformal that has um, source sync dynamics. So the North Pole um, is a source, and then the um, points are moving along these lines of longitude under the flow. Again, I think probably a lot of you are familiar with this. And the South Pole is a sink. And so this is evidently um, not an isometric flow because it doesn't even preserve volume. And it's also evidently unbounded in the um, compact open topology. Um, and um, again, I think this is an example that a lot of people are quite familiar with. The full conformal group is this rank one, simply group PO1 and plus one. Okay. And so um, we say that um, a group of conformal transformations So here, this is the conformal class of um, a semi-Riemannian metric G. We say it's essential if um, it is not isometric for G, nor is it isometric for any conformally equivalent metric. Okay, so it's not preserving any metric in the conformal class. <clears throat> And for a compact Riemannian manifold, um, this by some standard and classical results is just equivalent to H being non-compact. Okay. So um, the theorem, which uh, was conjectured by Lishnerowitz in the 60s and was proved simultaneously by um, Ferrand, and um, Obata says the following. Um, so given a compact Riemannian manifold, if the identity component of the conformal group is essential, Then our uh, manifold is conformally equivalent. So meaning it is diffeomorphic by a um, conformal diffeomorphism to the sphere with the standard Riemannian metric. <clears throat> 
And um, so what's interesting is that um, Obata's and um, Ferrand's proof were, were quite different. So um, Obata proved this statement um, using some theory of transformation groups um, uh, by constructing some conformal invariants and using some standard differential geometry. Ferrand, so first of all, she actually proved something stronger. She proved that um, if the full conformal group is essential, then the manifold is conformally equivalent to the sphere. Um, so, and her uh, technique is uh, using quasi-conformal analysis. Um, I should mention uh, that the, um, so I'm just going to state this theorem, assuming that the dimension of the manifold is um, at least three. Um, but it's also true for n equals two by some sort of complex analysis, not so difficult um, arguments. Okay, and then um, there have actually been two more proofs of this theorem given. So this was proved by Schoen in 1995 uh, using geometric analysis. So this was in the wake of um, his uh, work uh, completing the proof of the Yamabe problem. Um, and so using scalar curvature theory and geometric PDEs, he gave another proof of this theorem. And he also proved a version for um, uh, strictly pseudo-convex CR structures, for those of you who are familiar with those. And there, there had also been some previous work on that um, by Webster and Lee on the CR case. Um, and then finally, uh, there was a fourth proof uh, given by my collaborator, Charles Frances, in 2007 um, using Cartan connections. So using um, the uh, Cartan connection to um, to understand the dynamics of the, the um, conformal group. So if this conformal group is unbounded, then via the Cartan connection, um, he was able to prove that the, um, the vial curvature vanishes and that the manifold is in fact um, equivalent to the sphere. And uh, he um, also proved a more general statement. So he reproved the Schoen theorem for strictly pseudo-convex CR structures. And um, actually he proved it simultaneously for all of these um, rank one, um, uh, let's say uh, maximal parabolic geometries. Well, I don't think I need to say maximal. So for all of these rank one parabolic geometries, Okay, and I'll just maybe point out these proofs are all really different, which I think is what makes the theorem um, uh, significant, one of the things that makes it significant, but something that uh, everyone makes use of is these source sync dynamics of um, conformal Riemannian transformations. of conformal. So you, you, you saw that on the sphere. So um, every unbounded sequence of conformal transformations of the sphere behaves approximately like that with a source and a sink. Um, but this can actually be observed um, on an arbitrary Riemannian manifold if you have an unbounded um, sequence of conformal transformations. Okay, um, so then uh, in the, uh, around 1990, um, Dombro and Gromov asked whether there's some higher uh, signature analog of this um, theorem. 
And um, the uh, first thing maybe to note is that the, um, the model space that takes the place of the sphere is a bit more complicated. So, um, so question, oops. So is there a higher signature? analog um, of this uh, Theron Obata theorem. And um, so the model space, so it was um, in the Riemannian case, um, it was the sphere which um, uh, has as its conformal group, Um, P O one n plus one. So this uh, rank one usually simple for n sufficiently large group. And um, in um, so pseudo Riemannian case. The, um, the natural model space I'll write as um, SPQ. So this is called the, the Möbius space um, or the Einstein space of a signature PQ. So this is again, um, a compact conformally homogeneous space and it's a um, projective variety and it's um, a parabolic homogeneous space and the uh, group of conformal transformations is P O P plus one Q plus one, which now um, has higher rank. Um, once min P Q, oops, is greater than or equal to one. And um, so this means that the if you have an unbounded sequence of um, conformal transformations already of this model space it doesn't necessarily have source sync dynamics it can be more complicated okay and so um Um, now I will talk, focus a little bit on the Lorentzian case. So um, already in the Lorentzian case, there are more examples. So here's a pretty simple example um, that um, is called the Hopf manifold. So there is um, just as there is a um, conformal embedding of Euclidean space into the sphere. There is a conformal embedding of Minkowski space. I'm going to write it here in dimension three, but um, this exists in every dimension into this um, Lorentzian Mobius space of dimension three. So the difference with the, the Riemannian um, embedding of Euclidean space is that the complement of this Minkowski uh, chart is more complicated in the higher signature. So here it's going to be a pinch torus. But in any case, there is a conformal embedding of Minkowski space um, into this space. And um, then... Um, we can um, take the uh, quotient of Minkowski space by the following group of um, conformal transformations acting properly discontinuously and co-compactly. Well, we have to restrict to the complement of the origin. And then um, we quotient by just 
these um, scalar matrices. So uh, power, just powers of two times the identity. Okay, so this, um, this group is acting conformally, it's acting by similarities of Minkowski space, preserving the origin, and then um, it's acting co-compactly. So here's a two-dimensional picture of a fundamental domain. Okay, so the quotient is um, S1 cross S2. And um, the conformal group, so let's call this um, M. So the conformal group of M with the uh, metric, the conformal class of metrics that it inherits is, um, well, you just have to look at the conformal group of Minkowski space preserving the origin. So that's going to be the similarity group that has O12. And then it has the uh, real scalars, but we're taking the quotient by these powers of two. So the conformal group is isomorphic to a circle cross O12. And this is acting essentially. Okay. But on the other hand, um, this, this manifold is not conformally equivalent to the Mobius manifold. Okay, so um, one way to see that is the conformal group is smaller. Another way to see that is that this manifold has an affine structure. Um, okay, so here's already an example of a a uh, compact three-dimensional Lorentzian manifold, which has a central conformal group and which is not conformally equivalent to our model Mobius space. And uh, it turns out there are a lot more examples. So maybe I'll, I'll, um, I'll write it on this slide. Um, so there are a lot more examples. Um, so this um, Charles Francis proved in his thesis. So he found that, um, or he constructed um, for each genus G greater than or equal to one, a, um, a Lorentzian metric. Um, on a uh, manifold diffeomorphic to a surface of genus G oops, across the circle, which has uh, essential conformal groups, so it emits a flow, which is essential. And in fact, um, uh, on each of these, there there's an infinite per, there's an um, infinitely many uh, distinct Lorentzian metrics. So non-isometric, non-conformally equivalent Lorentzian metrics have essential uh, flow. So in fact, infinitely many distinct conformal structures. Okay, and these are clearly um, not. Um, conformally diffeomorphic to the um, Mobius space. So this Mobius space is um, has a twofold cover, which is S2 cross S1. Okay, so they're not even homeomorphic. Okay, but what they have in common is they are all conformally flat. Okay, and so what the, the Lorentzian Lishnerovitz conjecture then says is that if we're given a compact uh, Lorentzian manifold of uh, dimension at least three, if the conformal group is essential, so not preserving any Lorentzian metric in the conformal class, then our uh, manifold should be conformally flat.
So meaning that it's locally conformally equivalent to Minkowski space, or, or if you like, you could say it's locally conformally equivalent to the Lorentzian Mobius space, because that one's also conformally flat. Okay, and um, let me pause and see whether there are any questions about anything I've said so far, if I left something out or made something confusing. Okay, um, so let me mention, uh, I, I originally brought up this question whether there are higher signature analogs, and then I started just talking about the Laurentian case, well, it turns out that higher signature analogs um, above Lorentzian um, probably don't exist. Um, so if you take P and Q um, greater than or equal to two, and you take a type PQ uh, pseudo Riemannian manifold, then um, Actually, just a little modification of this Hopf manifold construction can give you a counterexample. So you just take a, um, a polynomial deformation. These were also written down by Charles Francis. So of the flat metric um, on Minkowski space of signature PQ. Um, so you can take a little deformation like this so that the resulting metric is not flat, but um, you can still find um, one conformal transformation fixing the origin and acting properly discontinuously co-compactly so that the, its powers act properly discontinuously co-compactly. So let's say our P plus Q minus the origin modulo the power, the powers of some element tau gives you a manifold diffeomorphic to S1 cross Sn minus one, where here N is P plus Q. And so that this quotient also still admits an essential conformal flow. Okay, so in other words, um, we can find non conformally flat compact pseudo Riemannian manifolds that have essential conformal group. Um, so the Lorentzian Lichnerovitz conjecture, on the other hand, has neither been proved nor disproved. And our result is that we proved it in dimension three. So our theorem. Um, is under the following assumptions. So we have um, a compact three-dimensional and we also have to assume a real analytic. Lorentzian manifold. Um, then if the identity component, so here we're proving the, the Obata version, or the this is actually what was originally conjectured by Lichnerovitz in the Riemannian case, nonetheless, um, this leaves open the question of whether the, the theorem is true under the weaker assumption that the full conformal group is essential. But so we prove that if the identity component of the conformal group is essential, then uh, the uh, manifold with its metric is conformally flat. OK. 
Okay. Um, so yeah, maybe I'll um, just highlight um, for those of you out there who um, would like to improve this theorem that we have to assume real analytic and that we're making the stronger assumption that the identity component is essential. Um, okay. Any uh, questions about the theorem, the statement? Okay. Um, so, um, let me give uh, some uh, ideas about the proof. So um, this is kind of a, a rough outline. The first step, um, which is a relatively short step, is to, to go from having the identity component of the conformal group acting essentially so the identity component of the conformal group is not preserving any metric in the conformal class to finding a vector field whose flow is essential. Okay, so we want a single one parameter subgroup, which is not preserving any metric in the conformal class. Um, then we, we uh, adjoin this vector field to our conformal structure and we consider the automorphisms of that structure. That is, we consider um, the uh, conformal vector fields for our a given structure, which also commute with X. Okay, and um, so a priori, so we, we have to consider just the local conformal vector fields. Um, and a priori, so these, that means these are conformal vector fields which are defined on some open subset, okay? And whose flow is conformal, we're defined. And um, so this is in some sense, um, an algebra of germs of uh, vector fields, which could uh, vary from one point to another. And, um, Analyticity and a theorem of Amores, which was also um, enhanced by Gromov, ensures that at least the isomorphism type of this Lie algebra is the same at every point. Okay, um, and now the dimension of this Lie algebra is at most four. Okay, so already this, the fact that, so in fact, the full um, conformal algebra has. Um, dimension at most four by, um, so this, for example, is contained in this work of um, Boris Kuglikov and Dennis Tay. Um, in this three-dimensional Lorentzian case, that result might predate them, but what we actually more precisely use and prove is that the isotropies, that is, if we look at these um, local conformal vector fields commuting with x and vanishing at a given point, this has dimension at most one. Okay, so then that means that our orbits of um, zx, these sort of local orbits, um, well, their dimension is can be bounded nicely in terms of the dimension of, of zx. Okay, so we'll say a little more about that later. And then we have basically four different proofs for the case that the dimension of ZX is four, three, two, or one. Um, so they're, they're all different. Um, and I'll briefly, um, probably at the end, say something about that. So I think um, officially I'm supposed to stop at 1040. I started maybe a few minutes late. Is it okay if I talk until 1045 or? At uh, 10.45 my time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 4.45 our time. <laughs> Sorry for being confusing. Okay. Um, okay, good. So, um, so actually, I'm going to, so I'm going to talk about the first step, just finding this essential conformal vector field. So, um, so step one. Um, I mean, this, this fact should be true in general, that if your identity component of your conformal group 
is not preserving any metric in the conformal class, then you should be able to find a one parameter subgroup in there, which is not preserving any metric in the conformal class. This is something which again, in the Riemannian case is trivial because you just would need a non-compact one parameter subgroup. Um, but uh, we actually used um, some specific knowledge about three-dimensional Lorentzian manifolds to prove this. Okay, so step one, we're assuming that um, this identity component um, is essential, so non-isometric. And we want to show that there's a one parameter subgroup in there, which is essential. And so what we, we um, consider an, an, a non-compact one parameter subgroup. So we consider an unbounded um, one parameter subgroup. So let's say phi t in comp zero. And um, if this is isometric for some Lorentzian metric in the conformal class, well, then um, Egani Zegib has a classification of compact three dimensional Lorentzian manifolds, which admit a an unbounded isometric flow. Um, so Zegi proved, and it's specific to three dimensions, um, that there are basically two possibilities for what our manifold could be. So one, and also for what the flow could be. But so one possibility is that it's just a flat torus. Um, so, so M is isometric to a flat torus. Um, so that is uh, with a, a metric that's just inherited um, from, that descends from uh, the three-dimensional Minkowski space. Um, and, uh, these, and then the flow is a, a suspension flow of, um, an auto of a torus automorphism, of a two torus automorphism. Um, but you don't, we don't, you don't even need to know what the flow is. So this is one possibility for what the manifold is. And then the other possibility is that it is um, PSL2R with a, a left invariant um, Lorentzian metric. Well, in fact, um, a, uh, let's say a bi invariant. So I have to, but I'll, I'm lying to you. I have to correct myself. So it's um, up to finite covers. Actually, let me say the whole thing up to finite covers. Okay, so the other possibility is um, that we have a PSL2R. With um, so here, this is the Cartan killing metric. Um, which is which is bi invariant and Lorentzian um, for this group, modulo um, a lattice gamma, so a discrete subgroup of PSL2R, which is um, also co compact. Okay, and um, what happens in either case is that you can um, basically say that um, if M is either of these manifolds, then the, um, the conformal group, well, it's going to lift, if you look at the connected conformal group, you can lift it to the universal cover. And there it's, it's um, can only comprise, the, the group of lifts can only comprise homothetes. So in either case, the lift of comp zero M 
to um, this to the the universal cover. Um, so, in other words, you lift it to Minkowski space or to PSL two R. That's not the universal cover, but that's the, a good enough cover. Um, comprises homothetes. Um, in other words, so similarities. So that is transformations where the conformal factor is constant. Okay, but then um, if, if uh, so such a homothety, if such a homothety happens to descend to M, um, then it has to be an isometry because a compact manifold um, doesn't admit a non-trivial homothety. So in other words, um, so um, maybe, I'll, so if M is compact and it, it has no non-trivial homotheties, Okay, so um, what we conclude is that then for either of these manifolds, the um, conformal group is um, isometric for um, the metric that we started with. And um, here I, I lied to you a little bit. Oops. Okay. Um, so maybe I'll, I'll um, just say a word about this case. So why um, should the lists of the conformal transformations here be homotheties? Well, it's because they have to um, be centralized by the holonomy. So um, if you um, lift uh, from M to here M tilde, which is PSL2R, then we know that the action of gamma on the um, co corresponding conformal vector fields is trivial, right? Because they have to descend to the quotient. But on the other hand, um, gamma is a uh, risky dense subgroup of PSL2R. So what that means is that the entire right action of PSL2R is trivial on these lifted conformal vector fields. And from that, it's not too hard to show that they have to, their flows have to be by homotheties. Um, however, these examples are actually a touch more complicated. So the metric here doesn't have to be the Cartan killing metric. It can be a certain deformation of that Cartan killing metric, which is not by invariant, but rather left invariant and then right invariant by a one parameter subgroup, which can be a unipotent or a semi simple subgroup. But the argument still works in that case. So I'm not going to go into the details about that. Okay, but so um, thanks to this um, very uh, precise classification in dimension three by Zagib of isometric flows, um, we're able to show that there is a um, one parameter subgroup acting essentially if the identity component acts essentially. Okay, um, so. Now I, I'm only giving myself about five more minutes. So um, let me, so I'm not going to have time to go into this too much. Um, but so I'll, um, I'll try to just give the idea. So um, if given a flow, oops, So the idea is that we want to now, um, we, I, I, I claimed that the isotropy in this Lie algebra ZX has dimension at most one. So I want to give you some idea of why that's true. Um, so the first thing is that um, if you have a flow, um, or actually, mm, let me, this is all very local now, so I'm going to just um, yeah, okay. 
So given phi t in, so I'll just write in conf loc m, uh, fixing p, if um, the differential looks like this, so um, if it's diagonal here, then, okay, we can write it in terms of some parameters, um, mu and lambda, because so the, um, the uh, similarity, uh, the linear similarity group of a three-dimensional um, Lorentzian inner product space um, is CO12. Okay, and so if we have a diagonal element, then the, the diagonal matrices in there, the, the simultaneously diagonalizable matrices in there is a di two-dimensional abelian subgroup. Okay, but if uh, we have that, um, um, let's say mu is less than one, and mu is less than or equal to one over lambda, and okay, we have some whenever lambda is less than or equal to one, so I'll call this stable linear derivative. Then um, it's easy to see that the cotton tensor, the cotton York tensor, which is um, a, a three form. And um, it vanishes at P. Okay, it's, um, it's conformally invariant. Okay, so just the fact that, um, yeah, the so the the um, that means that this tensor at p it has to be invariant by this um, by this one parameter group of linear transformations, and then if you just look at the this dynamics um, as uh, t goes to infinity, that forces the tensor to vanish at p. Okay, and um, so then there is a um, a theorem of um, also of um, okay, of um, uh, Charles Frances and myself uh, from uh, 2010, which says that if you have an analytic Lorentzian manifold, and a conformal um, vector field, Then um, the uh, flow, so, and let's say X is vanishing at a point P. So then we look at the flow um, generated by X. So either it's um, linearizable at P, meaning it is conjugate to its derivative at P, or um, the manifold is conformally flat. Okay, so what that means is that if we have a single one parameter subgroup of our isotropy, um, given that our goal is to show that our manifold is conformally flat, uh, we can assume that uh, any one parameter subgroup of any isotropy is linearizable. Okay. Um, and uh, so then the final ingredient, um, and I'm being a little sketchy here because of time, is that, um, if um, you have a derivative, which is one of these um, stable linear flows, like I just wrote, so with satisfying those suitable inequalities on mu and lambda. Um, so if dp phi t x, um, let me just say phi t, is um, stable linear, And um, so I'm assuming here that phi t p equals p for all t. 
And uh, we know that phi t is linearizable on a neighborhood of p. Then um, here we're using the Cartan connection and some previous work um, to that, that allows you to say that in fact, the uh, derivatives at points nearby P have the same behavior and you can use those derivatives to show that the cotton tensor vanishes at the nearby points as well. So cotton tensor vanishes on a neighborhood of P, um, which because we're assuming analyticity means that again, our manifold is conformally flat. Okay, and so then the, um, the, uh, the last, so the last step to say that the isotropy has dimension at most one is just to, um, to verify, and this is just some linear algebra basically, that um, if your isotropy in Zx, so if, Um, the isotropy in Zx has um, dimension greater than or equal to two, then you'll get a stable linear flow in there. Okay, and then you'll be able to conclude conformal flatness. So it won't, um, be able to go through the steps of that, but it's kind of, if you know what you have to do, then it's just a simple exercise. But. Okay, and um, are there any questions at this point? So I'm basically out of time. I'm just going to show um, this sort of table that um, gives like a summary of um, the different proofs in each dimension. Okay, so I'm stealing one more minute. Um, so, so then, as I said, in, so we just go through these different dimensions of this Lie algebra ZX. When the dimension is four, then um, that means that the orbits have dimension three because the isotropy is dimension at most one. And so that means that the manifold is conformally locally homogeneous. Um, and then it's not too hard to conclude in this case to see that you just look at the isotropy and either it forces your manifold to be conformally flat or it's unimodular, in which case you can show that the action is of our, our essential vector field is actually an essential. In dimension three, so here um, we can have two dimensional orbits or three dimensional orbits. And um, there's an important um, ingredient in all of these cases that comes from Gromov and that again uses analyticity that says that this Lie algebra Zx will always have a closed orbit. Okay. Um, and so we use this closed orbit and we go through the three possible cases of the, for the isomorphism type of the Lie algebra. And then finally, for the cases of dimension two and dimension one, um, we wind up actually um, using some um, a recent proof of myself with Vincent Pekastang, which I spoke about in Norway a couple of years ago, um, where we proved that the conformal group of a compact, simply connected Lorentzian manifold is compact. Um, and it turns out that somehow some of the, the important cases in that proof um, apply in this situation. Um, and so we borrow from that proof to uh, conclude. And I see that the, the um, MC is standing up. So maybe I should stop there and apologize for going over time. Okay, so should like to, we should thank the speaker.